mother became a believer in high school, but uh, she never pushed it much at all. Actually, I would hear she would tell me about God, and I knew of God. Satan knows him not too. He doesn't know God. I did not know God then. I remember my first year in college. Somebody asked me to go to a seance. Sure, I go. Why not? And uh, when I saw the guy floating around the room, I knew it was time. To leave. I remembered, you know, probably remember what my mom would say about God. But He is the all-powerful. He is the positive force in this evil world. The next thing that really caught my attention on the evil side was uh, in 1973, a friend and I and I went to see the exorcist, which uh, uh, I could not uh, sleep without a line on for six months. Uh, and I still, to this day, when my, when my wife goes to see her kids or friends in Ohio, I sleep with all the lights on in the house because I, darkness just, that movie was so dark and it was so real to me that I knew, I knew there had to be a positive force greater than what I was seeing. Uh, that was in 1973, but it wasn't until 1977 that I became a believer. You know, at my lowest point in life at that time, all I could do was look up and God took me out. I was working at an environmental consulting firm making most more money I've ever made in my life, which wasn't a whole lot, but I thought it was. I was just miserable. Struggling with growing as a believer. And I remember listening to Charles Stanley one day on the radio and he was talking about Matthew chapter seven, I think I believe it's chapter seven, where Jesus is walking on the water towards the disciples in the boat, and they're all scared. Except for one, because I'm a Peter. And he says, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come out. So of course the Lord did. And he started walking on the water. And then there was a voice. I don't know whether it's coming from the radio or whether it's a voice in a room or God planned a voice in my head. But he said this, and these are the exact words that I remember that. It says, Wes, you can do two things. You have a choice. Stay where you are, make a good living, but be miserable, or get out of your boat and follow me. I said, okay. That's what I did. I got out of my boat. I didn't know what to do and what he what he wanted me to do, but I was going to do it. About a year later, we were driving back from Florida to Ohio, and in the middle of the day, everybody's asleep with me driving, and I heard this voice, West, we, I want you to get involved in agriculture missions in, in South America. That's what I did. In 1999, my wife and I and our four kids sold everything we had, uh, moved to Bolivia. That was a big growth period for those five or six years from that time where I heard God speak. One of our friends told us about East Marion, about how they were doing a lot of outreach stuff. And we were really interested in, in, in reaching out to the community, wherever that community was. And so we went. It was just like we came home. We were having a hard time finding a home. We came here in that first day. It felt just like 